For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that I've been on the search for a really good, very stable, highly functional browser. And I've used them all. Like, every single one of them I've used or at least had a, a little look at. I can't say that I've lived in them all because, like, Vivaldi... I didn't use, didn't use that for more than probably 10 minutes. It's just so bloated and there's so much just junk in there that I just couldn't use it. Waterfox didn't, or, and Libre Wolf really didn't catch my fancy simply because there's so much stuff that I had to re-enable in order to actually have it function for me. And that kind of defeated the purpose of those browsers. There are a few that I keep returning to, like obviously Firefox is one that I've used for a long time off and on, despite having many problems with it. I've used Microsoft Edge a couple times and gotten a lot of flack for that on the channel because it's, well, it's Microsoft Edge. Uh, I've pretty much written that off because they've turned out to be evil people again. So I've abandoned that project for a long time. There are only really a few browsers that I just won't use. One of those is Google Chrome. I just refuse to use it. So I've tried over and over again to find a really good browser. Now, I want to use Cute Browser as my daily driver. I really do, and I've made several videos on it just begging and pleading for it to be really good. And there are many features on it that I just absolutely adore. And the fact that you can go through and use a terminal file manager as your file picker is just something that I find amazing and want in every single piece of Linux software. But there's a problem with Cute Browser, and that is the ad blocking is god awful. It's just so bad, and it makes it pretty much unusable for me. Now, I know that there are alternative solutions to ad blocking. All that stuff it requires quite a bit of effort in order to actually get set up, and eventually I'll get to that point. But needless to say, Cute Browser is just not my, uh, is not able to be my daily driver just because of that reason right now. So, I'm still on the lookout. So, a, f a few weeks ago, I did a video on Cute Browser and Ranger, and someone in the comments asked me, Matt, have you ever used ungoogled Chromium? And the answer to that is no, I've never used ungoogled Chromium. I didn't actually know what it was. I had heard of it, but I'd never downloaded it. I just assumed it was mostly just Chromium without the Google bits and that there wasn't going to be that big of a difference. And for the most part, I was right. It is just Chromium, but without the Google bits. But really, Chromium doesn't have a lot of the Google bits now either. Like, the, all the syncing capability of Chromium has been ripped out. So really all that's left there is probably just the tracking stuff. So <laughs> I'd never actually used on Google Chromium because I just made that assumption. So I decided I was going to do it. I was going to download on Google Chromium and use it for a week. And now I have. And I have some thoughts. So let's go ahead and take a look on Google Chromium. And you can take a look and see if you think that there are any differences. So this is on Google Chromium. It looks like Google Chrome. It really, really does. And... That's fine. I've gotten used to the looks. Now, the, one of the first things that I missed from Firefox is the ability to use user chrome.css in order to customize the, the user chrome, the, the UI of the browser. I missed that a lot. Over the last week, I've gotten used to it. This is fine. It's I have found that I'm actually opening up more tabs now and keeping them open longer than I was in Firefox, because in Firefox, I had this one-liner user chrome that kind of made it impossible to open up a ton of, of tabs like you could do it but they got scrunched up so fast that it just made it all a messy so i got in the habit of closing tabs really quickly when i didn't need them now that i'm using like a standard browser layout i tend to leave tabs open longer so but that's not really a, a browser thing that's just because i no longer have that one liner for me to be in that habit out of the box on google chromium is a pain in the ass to set up so i'm just going to put this out there so the first thing is, if you're on Arch Linux and you want to install this thing, there are many ways to do it, but chances are the first thing you're going to do is check and see if it's in one of the repositories, whether the community repository or the Arch user repository. And it's not in the community repositories. I looked. Unfortunately, there's not a binary there. You'd think that there would be, but there's not. And probably just because they don't want to maintain yet another browser. But it is in the AUR. So I was like, yes, win. AUR is awesome, right? Well, this time, my, my lovely AUR just kind of let me down because there's not a binary of on Google Chromium in the AUR. It's only the un uncompiled version. So you, if every time you download this, you have to compile it. And that takes 
a long time and a lot of CPU power to do. Like, I have a Ryzen 7 3800X in this computer, so that's like 8 cores, 16 threads, and it maxes it out 100% for almost 45 minutes. Like, that's how long it takes for it to compile. And if that was just a one-time thing, not a big deal. I could put up with that. I'm not happy about it, but whatever. But that's not just one, a uh, one-time thing. Every time there's an update to the browser, it has to recompile. And it takes about the same amount of time for it to recompile. And it just completely slows, slows down my computer. I feel like I'm on the gateway computer I bought in 2000. You know, it's, it's just... It's not a good experience. Now, that's not a gun Google Chromium problem. That's just the fact that there's not a, a binary for Arch. Now, the thing is, I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to see if there's a snap or a flat pack. There's not a snap package for on Google Chromium. Uh, I looked first. Like, I was going to just use snap. My, I know everybody knows that I hate snaps with a passion, but I was just going to use snaps, whatever. I have snap installed because of reasons and I was just going to use it but there's not a snap there is a flat pack from Flathub that you can download and I did uh, so I uninstalled on Google Chromium from that I had installed from the AUR and installed the flat pack and had to go through the setup all over again that's my number one on Google Chromium criticism is that it doesn't do well with transferring data from other browsers so because there's no syncing capability, there's no account, like, sign up at all, there's no way for that data for, to go from version to version if you switch between the compi compiled version and the flat pack ver version, for example. There, there's no way for that those things to kind of go together. So what I thought would happen would be that when you have the compiled version, it creates a folder in your .config file that ha that's called Chromium and has all your stuff in it. But the flat hub version doesn't use it. So I had to go through and reset it up. Again, not a huge deal, but it did take some time. And I'll explain more about why it's such a pain in the ass in a minute. But the biggest issue, for me at least, everybody knows that I'm more aesthetically inclined than most, at least in terms of my window managers and my stuff. I, like, I want it to look nice, at least. Uh, the flat hub version doesn't respect GTK themes like at all. Like It looked like garbage and I didn't want to use it so I uninstalled it and went back and recompiled the one from the AUR which took another 45 minutes and by that time I had already you know removed the chromium directory from my config file so I had to go through and reset it up a third time it was not a pleasant experience so let me tell you talk about setting it up out of the box the google chrome extensions I should say don't work out of the box. They just don't. You have to enable another, ex you have to download extension from a GitHub page or from the AUR uh, if you want, uh, install that manually, and then you can use the Google Web Store. Now, I understand because they don't want any of the Google stuff in there, that's the reason why they pulled it out. Not a huge deal, but it's not necessarily something that you can find out easily because there's, when you first open up, you get a screen that says Web Store with an icon in the center. You click on it, you get nothing. Like, it leads to, like, a... It's not even a 404 or It's just, like, a file not found error or something. And that's not a good experience at all. So, then you go up to the search bar, and you, you know, search how to enable Google Chrome Web Store uh, on, on Google Chromium, and you get nothing because there's no default search engine at all. Like, it's there's nothing set. You have to go into the settings and enable a search engine for yourself, which is fine, again, but it's just another step. And then, the, my very first time, when I didn't know anything about it... I went through and found out all that stuff. I got the the extensions I need working, like Bitwarden and uh, Better Tweet Deck and several others, like uBlock Origin. I need all these things, right, to make a good browser. I, I got all those things downloaded. I went through and signed into all of my accounts, you know, both YouTube accounts, Facebook, all this stuff. And then I closed the the web browser. I like did an update on my computer and restarted my computer. And when I came back to the web browser. I wasn't logged into anything again. I had went through and logged into everything and it logged me completely out. And that's because by default, it clears your cookies every time the web browser is closed. Again, not a big deal, but that first time it kind of pissed me off because I just went through and signed up, you know, into everything. And so I had to go through and sign up everything again. Again, not a big deal, but it's just one of those things. It's in it's in a process that you have to go through every single time. The 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 worst experience I had with this, and I will get to the positive things here in a minute. I promise. I know I'm going through and just doing negative after negative after negative. For the most part, the experience has been good. But I just want to talk about the negative things first, because <laughs> just because uh, it's just 
what's really on my mind. But the 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 worst experience that I had was the bookmarks manager. So by default, when you want your bookmarks, you can import them from another browser. So in my case, I still had my Firefox configuration file in .config. And I'm not going to delete that. I'm going to keep it because eventually I'll probably go back to Firefox. Everybody knows I will. I always do. So what I did is I imported all of my bookmarks from Firefox into on Google Chromium. And I don't think this is that this is a on Google Chromium problem. I think it's a Chrome problem. When you import Firefox or when you import bookmarks that way, it dumps them all into one folder. It doesn't remember the organization of them at all. It remembers that there are folders that you had created in other browsers, but anything that was in those folders all gets dumped into like the first folder. It's a mess. And you know what? Fine. Whatever. It's it that's a pain in the ass, but I could have gotten past it. The problem is there's no drag and drop here in the bookmark manager at all. I mean there is it looks like there is, like, but if I drag this Facebook thing down, it doesn't actually do anything. Like, like there's no, you can, you drag it over here, I guess, but you can't drag it and reposition it. You know, you can do that from the bar, but if you're using the bookmark manager, it just doesn't work. So you have to use copy and paste. The problem is, is that the first time I had to do it, I did not know that. So I actually had to go through and like, I, I can't even really remember how I did it. It was a, it was the, a long convoluted process that just was a pain in the ass. And I was thoroughly frustrated by the end of it. Now, as you remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about how I've switched back and forth between versions of on Google Chromium a couple of times. And I've moved from the, the compiled version to the flat pack back to the compiled version. And that's what is the biggest problem is that every time I did that, I had to reset up my bookmarks. So I've gotten actually really good at it. <laughs> I've, you know, I, now I know how I can go through and select all of them, you know, control X and control C and control V, all that kind of stuff in order to copy paste and all that stuff into the proper positions. I've gotten good at it, but it's not a good experience. It's just not. And the thing is, I want to set, uh, I actually I did set up on Google Chromium on other distros. So I'm long-term testing Fedora right now. That video should up, be up pretty soon. And I wanted to switch from Firefox to on Google Chromium on Fedora so that I could maintain my usage of it for at least the whole week. And the good news is on Fedora, there is a binary. So you do d sudo DNF install on Google Chromium and you get a binary of it. it installs really fast. It's really good. Uh, it's not the flat hub version. So it's actually really usable. And that, that was a good experience. But the problem is, again, I had to go through and set up the bookmarks again. So that was the fourth time that I had to do it. I also did it on that computer back there. The lack of syncing functionality is a, a bad thing for me. I understand why it's not there, but it's just one of those things where I really wish it was there because it's, it's kind of one of those things that I just have to have. Like I have browsers all over the place. When I add a bookmark, which I do all the time, I want to be able to have that stuff sync between versions of that browser, whether it's on this computer or on you know, a different hard drive or on a different computer, or whatever. It just is not there. And there's not does it seem to be a very good like ex web extension. Like I thought maybe there'd be an extension that would allow me to do this. I couldn't find a good one. So honestly, that syncing functionality is the number one problem I had within Google Chromium outside of the whole compile thing. So I thought I would talk now a little bit about what I like about it. So first of all, it is fast. It is really fast. It blows Firefox out of the water in terms of speed. Now, that's not something, I don't know whether or not that's quantifiable or not. I, from a feeling perspective, it feels just tons faster. Also, Firefox used to be like the, the, the king of smooth scrolling. Like, if you wanted to get into a web page and you were reading something like a long article or a story or whatever, and you were scrolling through and it would scroll really smoothly in Firefox. That's not the case anymore. For whatever reason, in Firefox, it's just janky and, it, you know, it scrolls like four lines at a time. It's not smooth at all. With on Google Chromium, that's not a problem. It's, it's very, very smooth. Like, the scrolling is fantastic. I love it. I also have not had a single problem with any web page rendering in this browser, which is a fantastic experience for someone who's always having those problems. Now, every time I say that, every time I say that Firefox has a problem rendering the web, I get about five people in the comments saying, oh, I've never had this experience before. Well, good for you. 
Uh, I'm glad you've had that kind of luck. I don't have that kind of luck. I've heard from multiple people, including several YouTubers, that have had the exact same problem that I've had with several websites in Firefox that just won't render. Cube Browser has the same problem. A lot of these very small web browsers that are based on either other engines or just doing things a different way often have time, have a hard time rendering certain web pages. It's just the nature of being very small. Going into a Chromium based web browser that is basically running the same engine as you'd get in Google Chrome means that the web renders beautifully. Like I've had no problems whatsoever. Except for Netflix. Like, okay, so Netflix won't run in this browser. I don't know why. Uh, it, has, it didn't say anything. Usually when you're in a browser that won't run, isn't compatible with Netflix because of DRM or something, you'll get like a, a gigantic screen saying, hey, you can't use this browser. It doesn't have DRM or something. Uh, this said something about WebRTC or I don't even know. It was really weird. Netflix just wouldn't run. Uh, I'm still investigating. It's not a big deal because I don't use Netflix all that much anyways, but it's just another of those things that you should know before you, you go into it. So my overall thoughts are that I like on Google Chromium quite a bit. I, I know I spent an awful long time on the negative aspects that I experienced setting it up. But once I got past the setup pro process, once I got past getting the bookmarks where I needed them to be, once I got past compiling it for the first time, I liked it. I really do. I think it's great. I don't think that it's my daily driver. If I were on something like a Debian-based distro or on Fedora, where I didn't have to deal with compiling it every time there was an update, I could probably see myself using it full-time. But on Arch, where there's not a binary, it's just not necessarily something that I could see myself using because browsers get updated a lot. Like, they get updated an awful lot. And I don't want to have to, every three or four days, recompile this for four, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. I really don't. And, you know, it's not... <laughs> If it was just that one time, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Like, I can put up with it one time, but every time it updates is just a deal breaker. And again, that's not an ungoogled Chromium problem. I could go to the GitHub page and download the binary from there. But keeping that updated sounds like a pain in the ass too, even though I wouldn't have to compile it. So, on Arch, I, this just is not a, a workable browser for me just for that one reason. What this experience has led me to believe, however, is that I could use... Brave as my daily driver much easier than I thought I could before because there was always been one problem with Brave that I just could not get past and that's the download bar at the bottom. Every time you download something in a Chromium based web browser that hasn't gone through and actually changed this functionality, a gigantic honking bar comes along the bottom and it doesn't go away. It doesn't, it just doesn't go away. It stays there forever until you dismiss it. I I, did, I despise it. Like, it's the worst thing that humankind has ever invented. It's just so bad, and I don't know what designer decided that, that was a good idea, but they need to get rid of it. The thing is, because I was in a Chromium browser now for a week, I had to live with that thing, and uh, I couldn't. Like, I, I, I couldn't put up with it. So I went into the web store and found an extension that queries whether or not the bar is available, is, is visible, and then uh, shuts it down. I think it closes the bar. So uh, the fact that that extension exists and I'd be able to use that in Brave, I think that Brave is probably where I'm going to next. And the thing about Brave is they have syncing capabilities, so that should make syncing bookmarks way, way easier. So Brave is probably where I'm going to settle. It's going to have all of the good things about on Google Chromium, but without the whole, you have to compile it for all the time and... Uh, the quirks of not having any, you know, syncing and stuff like that. So it w overall, it was a good experience. So in the comment section below, let me know if you've tried on Google Chromium, whether or not you like it or whether or not you use it. I would love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linux Cast, where I'd love to hear from you as well. I love talking to people on Twitter. It's fantastic, even though uh, we probably shouldn't be using Twitter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoos, Funtu, Patrico, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Fool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Carbon Dated, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, The Beasties, Rock, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.